Hello, everyone. Today, I have a very special podcast interview with Martin from dropshipping.com. I'm just going to jump straight into the action. This is a very, very general word, dropshipping. We talk about it all the time. And now we have the, the person who actually owns this domain. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. Martin, hello. How are you today? And thank you for joining us. Hello, everyone. So yeah, I'm feeling perfect and very excited to share a lot of ideas and to give value back to the community. Since we are dropshipping.com, I think we have a lot to offer. I agree. So what is dropshipping.com? Oh, yeah. Basically, we're building uh, a huge, I will say, medium first, and then uh, we are building directories and tools for everyone who is willing to start dropshipping or who wants to scale their store. To narrow down the whole idea about dropshipping.com, since this is a premium domain, and I think we should divide it in three parts. Uh, we're building a directory that was initial idea and where we share everything about dropshipping, listing all the suppliers, products for inspiration, stores, tools, e-commerce application, and everything that someone will need during the journey. And on the other side, we provide the knowledge, the know-how on how they can start and scale their businesses. Okay, so providing the know-how, the tutorials, the how to get started, uh, for anyone who's interested in the dropshipping business model. That's right. Um, so it's all about giving value, providing the knowledge, and just helping people start their way and grow. So are you a dropshipper yourself? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm in this space for a while and I was uh, in different roles all the time. So I started my journey as a simple dropshipper while I was working uh, on different uh, projects. And then I managed to build an agency working for the big brands, building uh, small stores to e-commerce empires. And then uh, we switched to the supplier sector where we were working with uh, luxury suppliers. And that's how we collect the whole knowledge. And when I say we, that's me and my team that we are all dropshippers in some way. But right now we are uh, dropshipping as a side hustle because the, our main focus is to build this premium community first and give the knowledge we have and then provide with the tools they need to build their stores. And then when we have extra time, of course, we are trying different tactics, uh, working on a site to build stores and to get the knowledge from there and provide it over our audience all over the world. I also use it as a side hustle today, Dropshipping. I've been doing it for over, over five years now. And uh, you know that we're also providing a lot of content because we know how to uh, how to get started, how to move forward, uh, and how to do all the things also that you are uh, teaching on dropshipping.com. And by the way, guys, do stay until the end of the video because you will have a special promotion if you want to use dropshipping.com and learn your way up from there. So stay until the end of the video. We're definitely going to get to that. So my next question to you, Martin, is I, I you you know you mentioned that you are a dropshipper and that you're doing it as a uh, side hustle. How long have you been doing that for? Who oh, I will say it's been five, six years. So since the beginning when dropshipping was on the rise and that's when we started with small... Actually, I, I started dropshipping on marketplaces. It was not even a real dropshipping store. I was learning everything from scratch, even if I have degree in marketing. But that's how I connect the dots and... In, in, increase from there. Basically everything we did it, it was step by step. First a store, then into the supplier sector, then we started to build softwares, then we scaled the agency working with different dropshippers. That's how the my stores was always on the side. And yeah, and right now over one year, right now I, I, I can say that we are working only with dropshipping.com, postponing all other projects or they are delegated to the whole team that we have here in Europe and US. And uh, yeah, of course, the answer is five to six years. Five to six years. Okay, that's good. So it, it's about the same amount of time that I've been doing it. And by the way, just because we're doing it as a side hustle doesn't mean that that needs to be your guys' play too. You guys can have it as a side hustle. You guys can later on turn it into your main hustle, into your main job. Usually the smart way to do it is to start it as a side hustle and you know continue working your regular your regular job and if you see that it's starting to work if you're putting in that extra time that you have and you see that it's starting to work you can turn that into a full-time business 
or keep it as a side hustle. Keep making that extra couple grand a month or however much you're profiting and continue doing what you're doing while continuing, of course, to expand and make decisions. Do you want to keep it as a side hustle? Do you want to turn it into a, into once again, into your main hustle? It's completely up to you. The dropshipping business model is a low risk and high investment, low risk, high reward, sorry, business model. And um, yeah, let's keep this going. So you told me how long you've been doing it for. And I know that it is a side hustle, but what actually brought you to start a dropshipping business in the first place before you even started? Why dropshipping? Uh, yeah. Uh, so as I said, marketing was my main passion. Always. I wanted to build something from scratch, share the ideas with people. And I was thinking, okay, let's choose a path to follow, not just uh, going from one to another thing. Of, of course, I tried affiliate marketing, everything that was on the plate. But then I saw e-commerce and the ability that you can build something from scratch. You can sell products for profits. And then, you know, uh, always when people are just uh, aiming to start, they're looking just for the profits part, which is fine. But the work that's behind the, the, the e building e-commerce store from scratch, automating everything is huge for beginners. And that's how I discovered the dropshipping model, which is low barrier entry and it's a low risk business model where you don't hold inventory, you are not manufacturing your products. So the idea that you can resell something that's valuable for your audience and make content around that, it was perfect start for my career. That's how I entered the, the whole system. And then I keep adding and adding, as I said before. Yes, it's the reason why most people join. It's also the reason why I joined. I was just looking for a, another way also to make, uh, you know, extra cash on the side, but also enjoy what you're doing and not just, you know, do something that you feel like you're being forced to do. So, uh, so that's for also sure. what brought me to start uh, dropshipping and still doing it till this day. And by the way, for those of you who are completely new, the dropshipping business model, as Martin also explained, is a low risk and high reward business model that simply allows you to fulfill, have an online store, fulfill orders without actually holding these products in your inventory. So you have an online store, you can choose where you want to host your online store. It can be uh, eBay, Shopify, Wix, uh, uh, Facebook Marketplace, it can be many places. So you choose to have an online store. You import products to your store that you're not holding in stock. You're not paying for any inventory. So you're going to, to suppliers' websites. You're importing the products that they have to your store and you wait to get sales. You can market your store. You can promote yourself in all kinds of ways and you wait to get sales. Once you get those sales, you go to your suppliers' websites, you purchase the product and you ship it directly to your end customer. If this is the type of business model that sounds interesting to you, Keep listening and also do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to always stay updated on all of the latest and all of the hottest topics that are coming out in the world of dropshipping, including e-commerce knowledge, success stories, how-to tutorials, and so much more that you can also find on dropshipping.com. Martin, this brings me to my next question. What do you recommend for people who are willing to start dropshipping today in 2022, in 2023? What do you recommend for these people? Oh, uh, interesting question. So basically you explained the whole journey of dropshipping and that's what we are trying to teach, to put it as simple as it is. Of course, there are a lot of things connected to building and managing the store. I will say leave everything for later, find a product, find a niche first, what you're passionate about, and uh, then learn how to sell it. You can try all the channels especially nowadays when we have all these options. I, I, I think we can talk about marketing channels later on, but I will say it's so easy and recession-proof business to start nowadays because you don't have anything to lose first, even if that this is your side hustle or a full-time job. And my uh, one-liner on how you can start dropshipping uh, in 2022 is just put it simple, find a product, find a supplier to fulfill your orders, build something very simple. I will say your store or your Facebook shop or Instagram shop, and uh, then learn how to market it even organically or paid. Uh, I, I know maybe I mentioned a lot of things at once, but that's a simple f formula. A lot of people are trying to complicate it. And that's why we're offering the pure advice on how to put it simple. Many people have seen many dropshippers or many people who want to be dropshippers who jump in right away and they didn't accumulate the right knowledge or they just maybe learned from 
one specific YouTuber who wasn't really a successful one and they just went with like one way of, of, of doing it. They took action, which is mo which is more than I can say for most people. Most people just plan strategies in their head and they never go, uh, they, they never go and actually Starting. take action. So, so there, so there is that those people usually, you know, the ones who just think and, and plan, but never actually take action are usually the ones who don't really succeed in those things until they actually start to take action. Then you have the people who take action, but they didn't learn the right way. So it's good that you took action because this is the way, of course, you're, you're going to miss the shots that you don't take. But, but when you take those shots, you want to be experienced. You want to have knowledge. You want to learn the right way. And dropshipping is very, very, it, it's on, on, on the one hand, it's easy. It's simple, but it's also complex because you need to know the steps. You need to, you need to know what you can and what you cannot do, what you can and what you cannot sell. But as you said, for people who want to get started, okay, to take their first step, one of the things that you have to do, like you said, is find a niche that you are interested in because it's going to be very difficult for a beginner dropshipper to sell a product that they don't actually have a connection with, like, you sell something that you don't care about, like, I don't know, screws and nails, something that's really boring for you. Try to sell that product, you're going to have a very, very hard time. But if you go for something that you're interested in, like if you like pets, try out the pets niche. If you like outdoors, try outdoor and camping. There are so many niches that you can connect with and work your way up from there. My next question, Martin, is what do you recommend as the best option or tool for finding products to sell? Because this is the next part. I I I'm going to start dropshipping. I found my niche. Like, let's say I'm going to have a store for dogs products. Where am I going to find dog products now? Uh, for sure. There, there are a lot of organic ways, I will say, without using any tools, because we need to teach people the simplest way. And you can find any products everywhere. So basically walking your dog on the street, you can find product ideas, or you can jump on TikTok and just type uh, Amazon made me buy it. And you can find a uh, product that are trending right now with most views and most clicks. Then you can go on Amazon or eBay and you can see the best sellings and you can just see if that fits in your passion, your idea in the first place. And after that, if you don't find anything that fits your needs at the moment, I would just suggest to try tools. There are a lot of cost-effective tools that we are sharing with our audience and uh, product research is very, very time-consuming part because I will say you can find product in five minutes. If you have already the idea, you can test it. You can succeed, you can fail, doesn't matter, but you will you will also want to find your next winner, your next winner you, to try, try over again because as we said, I don't want to sign as a uh, motivational coach, but yeah, taking action is the first big step, but staying consistent is the second. And if you want to find consistent good products, you got to use some kind of tools. And for beginners, I suggest to start with, you have Ecom Hunt, you have AutoDS, of course, you have Sell the Trend. All those tools are beginner friendly and you can use them to actually find products by searching uh, everything that's selling well at the moment. Those are good tips. I completely agree with you. Start manually, see what you can find manually because it's nice to start with a small budget and to work your way up from there without diving into expenses on your first month before you even know what you're doing because then you'll find yourself in a sea of expenses before making any sales and profit and you won't really be able to justify that. So start off manually and see how that works for you. It also opens your eyes and it'll also open up your mind to all kinds of categories and possibilities and niches that you weren't, you wouldn't have thought of before, before you got started. So the way to do it manually is as Martin suggested, just try to search up for the product that you're interested in, for the niche that you're interested in. Interested in. You can search, like you said, on TikTok, Amazon made me buy it. I've even seen uh, TikTok made me buy it, you know, all those kinds of searches. And, uh, and of course, searching on, on selling channels, like just go to eBay and search for the product that you're, that you're interested in, even if you don't want to sell on eBay, but you want to see the market demand. So you go to eBay, search for that product. And on the left side, you can filter by sold listings. So you can only see uh, results for listings that actually sold. So this way you can see that these, you know, this product is in demand. That's another way to do it. There are more ways to do it. But if you do want to put a budget aside, that is completely fine. You have tools, as you suggested, like uh, sell the trend, and uh, Ecom uh, Hunt, there's also a Zik Analytics. There are, there are many paid tools that you can use. There are uh, many of them out there and they're all effective. 
And that's if you have a budget, if you don't mind putting uh, the money on the side. But I always, um, uh, I always advise on starting off manually because you still want to learn the ropes. You still want to try to do it your own way before using some tool that's going to uh, show up some uh, search results from other uh, people's uh, success, which is also great. You can even try a mixture of them both. But as you said, Martin, product research is time consuming, but it's also very, very necessary. Some tasks can be completely automated. Product research, I think, should not be 100% automated because you won't see what you won't see the products. You won't find the products that you would find manually. So it's good to test them both. If you don't have a budget, go with manual. There are many product research methods. And yes, it is time consuming, but it is something that you want to spend your time on. And once you find a selling product, it becomes actually fun, right? Because you just sold something, you know that you did something right, you know that your product research is good. Now you can add more products that are similar to like that to make more sales, but always, always, always continue testing the market and researching the market for more products. So like you said, it is an ongoing process. It is recurring, but it is very essential to the success of our dropshipping business. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Uh, after we moved on to about uh, uh, product research and products, what dropshipping suppliers do you recommend to work with? We talked about finding the niche, we talked about finding products, we found them, we found the niche, we found the products, now we need someone someone that we can actually dropship from them. So what do you recommend regarding suppliers? Oh yeah, this is so interesting topic because we can divide also this part into two categories for beginners and people that are just starting. And for those who, I would say your phase of researching products can be done until you made your first 10 sales. So I will say if you didn't make a first, second or fifth sale, you're still into product research phase. Then you can start thinking about how you can automate the whole process to build a store and all those marketing add-ons and start selling and scaling from there. But in between, there is a supplier part. And for the supplier part, everyone is starting with the old but good gold uh, AliExpress or Alibaba. And I will suggest that as a main strategy, even if we know all the challenges with AliExpress, but uh, it's the best tool for first for product research. You can directly find the product and you can import that with all the tools that you can use. But as we said, we, we, we're not trying to bunch every information at one place. That's why I will try to be as simple as possible in this explanation. But you have tools that can literally import your products directly from AliExpress to your store and you can start selling in five minutes. But to find good suppliers, it also takes time. I want to scare everyone who is a newbie here, but if you are trying to do your first sale and to find yourself into this e-commerce space, into this dropshipping business model, you should start with Alibaba and all those suppliers. The biggest challenge, as we all know, is the shipping times, but at the beginning, you should not think about shipping times. So yeah, after you overcome all the challenges you are facing with AliExpress and all those uh, not fast shipping uh, times for your products, you're on your way to find a supplier that can manufacture your product or maybe that those are mostly scaling tactics. But I will mention that your goal is to find a dedicated supplier that you can work for a long time. And what should you look for a supplier is the shipping time, the software integration, and the quality of the products they are shipping. Of course, customer support and all other personalization and customization they can offer. If I um, should pick a few suppliers for beginners or those who are exiting the beginner phase and leaning into intermediate phase of dropshipping journey, uh, I will suggest to try more uh, European or US based uh, suppliers like Spocket, uh, Science or Big Buy. And then you can find a real supplier that is manufacturing products directly for your niche. So for example, you can find a pet supplier who is actually just working with people who are selling pet products, or you can uh, work with someone who is doing fast shipping only for your local country. Uh, maybe I'm mentioning a lot of uh, extended tactics, but that's your final goal. And to sum up, you start with Alibaba, AliExpress, find big suppliers that are shipping a lot of uh, products in different niches from your uh, country, the country where you plan to sell. And then when you uh, reach 
a certain amount of sales when you're confident that, okay, this is the thing, this is what I'm going to sell. Then you start negotiating and finding suppliers who are actually manufacturing products that can personalize for your store in your niche. Those are good tips. So you start start basic like AliExpress, like many, many dropshippers usually start from AliExpress. Like you said, there's the shipping barrier. And I know many, many cases where AliExpress actually offers very fast shipping times. But some, but they have improved, uh, you know, dramatically over the last uh, couple of years. But on the other hand, it's very easy to fall into those uh, uh, the other side of suppliers that still ship out slow, and some of them don't even provide tracking, and many sellers don't even check that before they uh, before they purchase from them, and then you don't have any proof of where the package is going. So you do want to see who the seller is on AliExpress. It's easy to check out the reviews that these sellers have, check out their percentages. It's always good to go above 95%, anything above that. Um, and you know, you also have uh, item as described, their communications uh, ratings and uh, things like that. So you know that you will deal with a high quality seller from AliExpress. For those of you who don't know, AliExpress is not one big store. It's simply a marketplace. It's like Amazon where you have thousands of sellers who are selling their merchandise on their marketplaces. So AliExpress has a lot of Chinese sellers who are simply selling products from other Chinese stores. In other words, they're also drop shipping to you, but that's the way that it works because they're buying from Chinese uh, wholesalers and stores who don't speak English. So they are the agents who are able to translate it to you. That is AliExpress. So if you bought from AliExpress before, you've also bought from drop shippers. Drop shipping just pretty much makes the world go around today. And yeah, so starting with AliExpress is very basic and it's a very, very good place to start. Uh, you can also see the shipping time. So be sure to check that out and uh, see how long it takes the, sh uh, the seller to ship to your targeted uh, country. And of course, it also matters where you're drop shipping to, just like you said, Martin. So if you want to target the US audience and you ship from China, the, the shipping could take a while. It could take a couple of weeks. Most customers don't like that. So always look for you know sellers who can actually ship quicker. You can look for the same product from multiple sellers. So it's going to help you. And um, and you can also on AliExpress today, AliExpress has warehouses not only in China, they also have warehouses in the United States. They have warehouses right here in Israel. Martin, last week I ordered a, a green screen for, uh, you know, to, to put right here in the back. And I, I saw that the seller, it's he's Chinese, but he has a warehouse here in Israel. So I ordered the green screen and it, uh, and it arrived between three to four days with tracking. So that was amazing. And uh, and that is something that you guys can take advantage of, too, if you're dropshipping from AliExpress. On the top right, you can choose uh, what country you want to ship to. So it'll only show you products that can ship to there. And also, you got to ship from after you create a search. So you can say, you can tell AliExpress what warehouse you want to ship from. And if you can get the sh same ship from and ship to, then you're going to keep it domestic and you're going to offer fast shipping time. So that is a way, That is a, that's just one small tip to optimize it from AliExpress. They are a good place to start, like you said, but after you start to gain massive sales from a product and you're ready to scale that, then AliExpress is not your go-to anymore. Now it's time to start negotiating, find better suppliers who can give it to you at a better price and even maybe with customization options. Uh, and then you can even private label your products, but that is the next step for advanced dropshippers. Martin, my next question to you, what are the best countries to target for dropshipping nowadays? Since we just talked about it, we talked about how you can choose what countries you want to you want to target. So what are your recommendations today for countries to target when dropshipping? Here, people have different choices based on different factors. You can decide what's the best place to dropship to, or uh, it, it doesn't matter where you're dropshipping from, but it matters where you're dropshipping to. So first, everyone is looking for the large markets, and that's why we can mention the biggest one, of course, US, UK, Canada, Australia, and of course, a few European countries then you're looking for the market potential. Uh, there should be money to be made. So people should have mm, buying potential. Of course, I'm not discriminating any country because if you have good product and if you have good prices, good shipping time, you can drop ship to any country in the world. And so then the next question you gotta answer in order to decide where you're going to dropship is the language barrier. So you should be able to communicate with suppliers from the other, from the one side, and then most important with your customers in their native uh, language. So that's why a lot of people are just starting in the US speaking countries and you're covering, as I mentioned, US, Canada, uh, UK, and Australia. 
But nowadays with the globalization, it, everything is one country, everything is one place. You can say, I'm dropshipping, I'm dropshipping uh, worldwide and you can actually do that in English because well, it depends on the product you are selling. That's another factor and depends on the shipping time. But I think if you answer this question, the next one is your budget. If you're a beginner, just pick one country or probably your country, will, the best case scenario is the country you're living in because you know the market, you know the people, you know their buying behavior, you know how they uh, communicate, what channels are working best for advertising. But um, you can just pick one country for beginning and then you can expand from there. If something works in the smallest country in the world, it can work everywhere. So it's about testing, but yeah, just find an answer on those five questions and you will have uh, the potential and you can answer them whenever you're starting. In the moment you're picking your niche and your product, in the moment you're choosing your supplier, you, you should decide where you are going to, to target and what is the best country. And then it's just testing. If this country works for you, keep going. If not, switch it up. Okay, great. That's a good strategy. So Keep it simple in the beginning, as always. Keep it simple, learn your way. If you found a country that you want to target at the beginning, like your local country, or if you want to go for a very broad country with lots of uh, demand, then you want to target, then you want, then you'll target the US, which is what most dropshippers yeah. do in the beginning. On the one hand, it's good because you know with the right product research, you are going to make sales. On the other hand, you will deal a little bit with product saturation, and that is completely fine the because we're always yeah. testing products. And, but many times, if for example you're dropshipping in the US and you have enough sales, you open up another dropshipping uh, store targeting the sure. United Kingdom, or let's say on, on the same store, you change your policies, doesn't matter. Now you open up your business to another country, to, to the UK. Now a, a product that sold well for you in the US might not sell well in the UK, but it's also vice versa. Something that didn't work in the US because for on the one hand, it's saturated. Many US sellers are pushing it to the US audience, but no one is actually pushing it to the UK audience. That is actually your, your gold mine right there. So you're going to be the first one who's going to create a selling wave on a product that's saturated on one, one market, but not on the other. But you always want to keep it slow, start Correct. slow, keep it simple, like Martin said. Start with one country and you will learn to work, work your way up from there. One more tip for the advanced dropshippers before you target countries that you haven't, that you don't have any knowledge of, like the UK, you need to understand how it works in terms of uh, VAT and import tax and all those things. So uh, we also have content on it, but it's something that you want to learn. Don't just dive deep into uh, uh, dropshipping to a country that you have no knowledge of whatsoever, how the commerce uh, rules work there. Okay, so keep it simple. That's correct. You can do it to your own country. You can start broad like the US. Uh, it's very, very simple there to sell to and work your way up. Okay, Martin, my next question to you, do you use or 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 have you used or do you recommend using uh, automation software for uh, drop shipping? And it can be automation for any purpose. When you cross all these phases that we were mentioning before, to find your niche, to find your product, to test it out, to make your first 10 sales, and then to choose your best country to work with. And when you go this journey up to this moment, you gotta start thinking about automation of any way of the dropshipping uh, process. So uh, that's how you can operate. That's how you can call this a business, not just a self-employment. And if you want to, to, to scale it from here, and not work every day uh, for a simple repetitive tasks, for example, uh, you should pick a software. And there are a lot of softwares that we are actually reviewing on dropshipping.com. That's our, one of our main jobs. And that's why I cannot pick only one or two, but I will say you should again, go over a pros and cons for every dropshipping software in one category. So we have a dropshipping software for uh, automation software for product research. Then you have a software that connects the product, integrates it to your store. Then you have software that uh, after purchase software or application on the store, you have software for pricing. Uh, then you have tracking inventory. And here comes the, 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 the biggest and hardest part. When you should track your inventory, when you should upload all the products and make sure you're not out or your supplier is not out of stock and then ship all the uh, all the products directly to your customers keep tracking of all the orders keep updating the products and the prices and then you will need a real software but 
of course, for the beginners, you should probably not think about this in your until you make your first few sales. But yeah. then I would suggest pick one software, review it over uh, different factors. Depends on the pricing, on how uh, it, it, it's important for you in your phase of your journey. Then see all the features if that software covers all the features that you, you will need at that certain moment. Not uh, because you have a software automation software that specializes only on one thing of the journey. And then you have softwares, let's say, for example, AutoDS that covers a lot of uh, features and a lot of topics that you can automate on your journey. So I will suggest go over all the factors, do your pros and cons, pick one, test it out as everything that we mentioned before. It's all about testing because a lot of software are providing a free trial. So that's the best part. Uh, you can test every software for seven days and see if that works for you and your journey. And by the way, try to learn how to use it because even me, when I, I was trying to be a kind of software geek, I, I, I was missing a lot of features of a lot of softwares or SaaS companies for all my other businesses. And I was paying for something that I'm not using. So make sure to see what you're paying for and try to use the whole thing uh, for all the other steps that you will need in the future, not only at this point of purchasing the software. Great so tip. basically my, my, my answer is too general, but I will say I cannot mention only one because that will open another one hour of uh, podcast filming. But yeah. Yeah, it's a, no, it's a good tested. answer. It's a good answer. I'll, I will recap it. So there's two ways of doing it. There's a manual way and then there's the automatic way. You can manually manage your dropshipping business, meaning you're importing all of your products, you're adding them one by one, you're copying all of the images, you're downloading them from, from the supplier's website, you're adding it manually one by one, the product's title, the description, all of the variations, uh, and everything else that comes with it, the optimization, everything you're doing on your own. So you're importing the products one by one. Now try to think what happens when you want 100 products and then try to think what happens when you when you want 1,000 products. Then you have the price and stock monitoring, which as you mentioned, so you have the supplier's website, the, the, the supplier, you're, you're adding products from this supplier. Now the supplier changed the prices. He changed the prices on his website. So what about the prices on your website? Are you going to check out all of the 1,000 or all of the 100 products every day? You're, gonna, you're going to refresh your supplier's website. That doesn't really make uh, any sense. So it really is good to use automation once you actually start to scale. Uh, and you can start manually. It, it, I actually uh, recommend starting manually because you need to learn the ropes. You can have something automated for you if you don't really understand the process in the first place. So you can start manually. And once you start to get those first few sales, now it's time. It's the best time to automate your business because it's time to scale. You cannot scale without automation. And every successful e-commerce store owner, every successful dropshipper will tell you the same thing. So there's the manual way of doing it. And then there's the automatic way, which is when you start adding uh, tools. Now, besides using dropshipping automation tools, you can also hire a virtual assistant, which is something that a lot of people do. And they let the virtual assistant pretty much automate their business. Now, this is a good way to do it. But on the other hand, you're going to pay the virtual assistant much more than what you're going to use that tool, that automation tool on a monthly basis to automate uh, the same amount of tasks. And you can also mix in both. You can have an automation tool and allow the virtual assistant to have access to parts of those uh, uh, parts of the features inside that tool. So you can only give them what you trust them and build that trust in time and give them more and more tasks. So, so you can really mix it in with a lot of things. But at the end of the day, scaling which means hitting the big numbers can only come with automation. And I'm glad that you see it the same way. Back to dropshipping.com. So Martin, how is dropshipping.com different from other websites that teach dropshipping? And there are a ton of websites that teach dropshipping. Of not, course, this not, is many a... of them are not, not so good, but let's just say that there are many of them. How is dropshipping.com different from them? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so dropshipping.com is not about only the premium domain. That that gives us the, the advantage in front of other dropshipping uh, teachers or mentors, but uh, it also gives us a big obligation to, to try to provide uh, objective opinion reviews on software, on suppliers, and to list everything. By everything, I mean everything we mentioned in, into this dropshipping journey. So we are trying to incorporate all the information and listings for the dropshippers who are actually starting on, who want to start selling, 
to have all the information in one place. So my, our motto can simply be, we scrape the internet. So we scrape the internet and provide information in one place. And on top of that, we are trying to teach people non bias uh, ways on how to start and scale. And the, the factor that a lot of people nowadays are teaching and making money just from teaching without even experience or make some uh, big numbers in dropshipping is that a lot of people are trying to sell or, over, or unfortunately oversell our courses. And we are not promising those big monies. We, 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 are, we are not promising getting rich overnight. That's the main factor because you can get rich, of course, in one month. You can go over this process in one month, test uh, your product, find the idea, scale it from there. Maybe you have experience in different marketing areas and you can incorporate everything into your store. But I will say it's not that easy, of course. And our job is to make it easy without uh, promising millions or getting rich overnight or just simply, hey, motivate you. Uh, our audience. We're not here just for motivation. We are here for uh, real advice. And we want to put people in position where they can, whenever they start thinking about dropshipping, any tool for review, any supplier, or they want to find a product to sell, uh, they want to hang out with community of other dropshippers, they want to find a simple tools, let's say, for example, a profit margin calculator, they should think about dropshipping.com. Maybe I'm dreaming too much at this point, but I think no, that's doable. It, it's, because an all around, I, it's an all around website that has only sure. and everything that has to do with the dropshipping. And it's not just on one specific feature about dropshipping. It's everything, everything, including dropshipping, yeah. anything that you can, uh, that you might need help with. Even if you're a beginner, even if you're an advanced dropshipper, you should have it all in dropshipping.com. That's that's correct. Thank you about the clarification. Of, of course, uh, I, I was trying to narrow down the word everything because uh, whenever you say everything, it sometimes means nothing. But we are trying to, to, to do our best and to provide all the information on all to, those different parts because it's not our goal to teach only, let's say, for example, product research. And then what? And it's not about just building a community without providing the directory. The, so on our website, people can find a, a space where we answer all the questions. Are we media or block, dropshipping block? Yes. Are, are we a directory? Sure. Are we providing tools, apps, review? Yep. Reviews? Yeah. And a aggregator of all the information of the internet. And that's also true. A community that's also something that you can find on the website. So basically all in one platform or community for the dropshippers who want to start or who want to scale their business. So we have so, for so it's something your, for your one stop shop for all things dropshipping. And um, we can put it that way. Yeah, it sounds, uh, it, it sounds like a, it sounds very, very promising. Uh, I have no doubt that if I was uh, uh, starting my ways or or if I was looking for more ways and more tactics to do things that I wouldn't have thought of, this is this 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 might be a very good place for me to go to, and to get those things. And now, does dro a lot of people are maybe thinking about this by now? But does dropshipping.com cost money? Huh. Okay. So eighty percent. I will I, I will go with percentage. Eighty percent of all the information directories that we are providing on dropshipping.com is for free. So we are not charging our users to get the information in the first place. And we are not trying to upsell them something after they enter their email or join our community. But on one part, that's how we are trying to sustain this business model. We are charging a premium membership subscription where we combine a lot of advanced tactics, where we combine the community of mentors, people that are willing to teach you how to start or scale your business. And of course, in that place, we are giving a software discount. We are connecting a lot of uh, the best reviews. And uh, of course, I, I think that should be understandable for everyone. Uh, we have a small per portion of our website that we are charging for and everything else is for free. So dropshipping.com is a humble, down-to-earth website that's not promising you anything that's not, real that's not realistic. Not uh, start your store now and by tomorrow you can already buy your Lamborghini, but it actually t will take you to your step-by-step -step process on what you need to do to get it done. And most of the information to get started, to do it the right way, 
uh, for beginners especially. It's all there for free. And then once you're ready to take it to the next step and let's say like like uh, like you said, get a mentorship or or you know things that are much more advanced like that because now you're ready to start scaling those sales, then it would be a time to to join the exclusive membership program if I if I understood it correctly. That's completely correct. So there's no hidden cost or something because we know a lot of programs are just you're paying a small commission and then you're getting upsell to expensive courses inside. So it's not you're paying one fixed amount just for the team to sustain this business model. And then you will never be charged something else. Or, uh, of course, we have a monthly subscription and a lifetime value for a monthly subscription. You, 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 you're you paying until you use our community and everything that we provide inside. But that's our promise. That's why I am so much into this and trying to uh, accent to put accent on the thing that we are not trying to upsell or provide any expensive courses. In fact, we are combining a lot of dropshipping courses, mentors that are teaching their craft uh, on different parts of dropshipping for that one subscription. So may I, maybe I can uh, allow myself to say we we are going to become a Udemy for dropshippers. So hold the courses for one simple price. Nice. Nice. So I'm not going to see any five thousand, ten thousand dollar course on your website. That's my promise. <laughs> okay. Okay. Great. Uh, so before we wrap this up, by the way, uh, guys, we still didn't get to the to what you're going to get to by listening, uh, and you are going to get something. We're going to get to that in just a, few, a couple more uh, minutes. Martin, before we we wrap this up, do you have any additional tips? to help dropshippers succeed in their journey? I will repeat myself and try to be a little bit more with motivational thoughts right now because a lot of people are scared to start. A lot of people are still doubting this business model because, you know, there are a lot of video, videos over YouTube where you can find dropshipping is dead. Is it dropshipping legal? Is dropshipping ethical? We teach, by the way, those things and how this is a legal uh, thing and that Everything in the world is based on this model, reselling. So you you got nothing to lose if you try it, but just be careful. Use the right information and the right tools and try not to be scammed. That, that's the biggest advice I can give right now. But to be more actionable, I, I, will, I will say go, go over the process. Try not to look for a shortcuts or cheating models because you can find one product on TikTok create three videos about it, uh, you can maybe get one sale and then you're down. And then you're trying affiliate marketing, then you see those uh, cool NF NFTs, then you're j jumping into crypto, try to be consistent in one thing. And that's how you will see that in one or three months, dropshipping actually works. That's why we in, in this year, we are building and putting a lot of effort in dropshipping.com, this domain. And that's why a lot of businesses are still working uh, and providing value in different kind of ways into this community because it works and it will always work for those who take action and stay consistent. I think th that's all. Yeah, so, so taking action, of course, is important, but also the step before that, which is learn. So it's always learn, take action, learn, take action, learn, take action. Don't just learn. Don't just take action. You need one with the other. They have to come together, but that is the, the way to do it. And uh, that is the way to work your way up. You will only know your successes once you actually try it and really try it and learn the right way and then take action again and keep this rinse and repeat process until success starts to come your way. Now, it is not too good to be true. It is not an overnight success story like you explained it. It is an actual business. You are running your own business. But like we said, it is a low risk. It has a very low risk, low investment, and it can reap you with high, high rewards. Okay. Once you got your product research on point, you're marketing to the right audiences, uh, 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 you're targeting the right audiences, you're selling the right products. You make, you create another store, another store. You have everything automated. Everything is connected. Everything is networked and everything is breathing. And you're making your, uh, you can call it uh, passive income. A lot of people, don't want to say the word passive because it's not passive if you actually have to work for it. But on the other hand, you are generating sales while you're sleeping. You're generating pro uh, profit while you're traveling. So that is one source of passive income that you worked really hard to create. But once you have it going, it's all smooth sailing from there. So those are great tips. Uh, Martin, I was really, really happy to have you here on this special podcast and for those of you who were waiting until this last minute, first of all, congratulations. It shows that you are actually interested in starting this business. So head over to dropshipping.com 
And before you purchase their uh, premium subscription, I'm going to leave a code right below this video in the description where you will enjoy a 20% discount. But for those of you who are listening and you're not watching the video, then the code is dropshipping20, the, the word dropshipping and then two zero. That is going to give you a 20% discount on dropshipping.com and nobody else knows about this. Nobody else is getting this. It is only for those of you who are listening to this podcast episode. Thank you very much for watching. Do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to always learn about the next step in your e-commerce business, along with all of the automation and everything that comes along with it so you can scale your business and really find success. Martin, thank you very much for being here today. I highly appreciate it and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for having me. It was nice to talk to you and sharing ideas with your audience. And I know if they follow all the steps and be consistent, everyone can succeed in this space. So take care, so. everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.